ברתה אדוני אלוהים מרחום שהכל נהיה בלבו. How's it going everybody? Haven't spoken to you like this in a long time. As you can see, it's that time of year where I'm not allowed to drink wine. <laughs> Being in the wine industry, that's uh, kind of strange, but it is what it is. For those of you guys are wondering why I'm not allowed to drink wine, it relates to the time of year and the topic that I want to speak to you about. So we are in the nine days. We're in the beginning of the month of Av. And as you guys know, one of the things that we're not allowed to do, as you could see, you know, I kind of forgot to get a haircut, to get a haircut before the three weeks kicked in. And uh, shaving it is what it is, whatever it is. But um, so not allowed to shave, not allowed to take a haircut. Basically, we're in a mourning period. And one of the things that we're also not allowed to do is drink wine because we're mourning over um, essentially a structure that we don't have, the Jewish people. Namely, the Beit HaMikdash, the temple. And in the temple, we had wine libations. So because we don't have a temple, we don't, we don't have wine libations. So therefore, as part of the morning, we can't drink wine. We can't eat meat, we can't drink wine. We don't have the sacrifices, we don't have the libation, libations. So that's what it is. So it's kind of a famous... I guess thing or a famous um, I guess question or maybe sentiment that a lot of people I mean I include myself in this um, find it difficult to you know generate um, I guess sadness or or mourn for something that we never saw and we never had you know, how could, how can you mourn something you never saw, you never had? How can you mourn something you physically never lost? How can you mourn for a person you never had a relationship with and never, never met? You never lost them. You can't mourn something you weren't alive to see or experience, you know, 2,000 years ago. How is it possible to mourn? You could say... I can, you know, you could say I understand that there should, the idea of that there should be something there, and maybe you feel a lack, maybe you feel kind of a, um, maybe like an emptiness or a numbness, but 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 to to go so far as to say that you mourn something, right? Again, you weren't alive two thousand years ago. You know, not getting into the discussion of Gilgulim, of of reincarnations, of Kabbalah, or these kind of things, ostensibly, physically, you weren't alive. You don't have the consciousness of, you know, being alive at that time. At least not as far as you you can you know, or not as far as you can, you know, intuit. Let's say. So how can you mourn? It's very strange, right? And it's interesting, guys. I finally understood. I finally understood this past week, these past few days, what it's like to mourn something you never had or something that you never had and lost or something that you never even attained. Let's put it that way. And, and I understood it from a very kind of a observing an unlikely source or an unlikely, let's say, event to help me relate to that. I'm talking about the European Soccer Championship. Euro, what was supposed to be 2020, and they're being played, played in Euro in uh, 2021. 
And, you know, I'm watching this game. Just one side, guys. Our, our cousins over here like soccer. But they also like really... They also like music that hasn't basically hasn't changed in decades, if not millennia. It's amazing to me that a newer generation will just play the same type of music as the previous generation. And now they're just standing on the corner, and I don't think they plan on moving. Interesting. That's another thing. <laughs> they, they never lost it. <laughs> anyway, so, okay. So I'm watching this game, this final. And you have a game that's being played in Wembley Stadium in London. I think 80,000 spectators, and I would say 60,000 of them. Let's say, I, I don't know the exact number, but at least 60,000 of them are rooting for... England, the home team. And, you know, this is a country that has won one tournament, one major international tournament in its history, and that would be the World Cup in 1966. You're talking about something that happened, something that was held 55 years ago, my friends. So, most of the people, I would say, in that stadium, with the exception of maybe Sir Jeff Hurst <laughs> and a few of the people, really, I mean, they don't remember having won anything or having anything in their possession or anything significant to speak of, right? Most of the people in that stadium never, never saw England win anything. The, the best they saw is probably England making the semi-final of the previous of the World Cup in 2018 and now in their lifetime they saw England make the final and maybe they saw yeah they saw England maybe maybe if they if they're old enough like myself they saw England when I was a kid made the semi-final of the World Cup in Italy in 1990 which they lost in the third place match to Italy themselves who won the bronze medal that year uh, Germany won that year and Argentina lost. Uh, yeah, the final. Maradona. Whatever. So, <laughs> most of these people never had anything. Never saw any... In their team reach the pinnacle of anything. And I'm, and I'm saying this with Lahav, I hate to compare this, but I, I finally understood, guys, the concept of never having anything and mourning something that you don't have. England was winning this game. They got off to an early, a great start, an early goal. They gave up a goal later in the match. They ended up losing as classic, in classic England style, as only England knows how to lose on penalty kicks. They missed, they missed three in a row, or, you know, the goalie who was amazing for Italy saved three in a row. And you just see people you know, crying, mourning, like, like they had the looks on their faces as if they literally just lost their relative. They were at a, basically at a funeral. House of Shalom as if their father, you know, one of their parents died or I don't know. It's just, these people look like as if they, their lives were over. They look like they were mourning something that they lost. And, you, and you're sitting there and you're looking at them and you're just like, my God, what, 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 what's the big deal here? Okay, you lost, you lost a kid's game, you lost a soccer game. Okay, it was the final of the European tournament, but I mean, come on, like tomorrow the sun is going to come up. You, you're, you're going to wake up, you're going you're gonna to be able to breathe. You know, you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna wake up, you're going to go to the kitchen, you're going to get some breakfast, you know. If you have a job, you're going to go to your job, make money. If you don't have a job, you know, the government is going to send you money. You're not going to starve on the streets. What are you mourning? What are you, what are you, what are you crying about? A bunch of dudes running around, ran around uh, a field for 90 minutes and they, and they, you know, the other team put the ball in the net more than they did. 
you know the coach screwed up and put the wrong guy whatever it is the you know the wrong guys out there and you know whatever i mean you didn't get to get medals from the queen or the you know the prince william my friends but then you i thought about this and i'm like you know for these people this is equivalent to a spiritual experience you know everybody on this in this world is looking for some sort of connection to the ethereal to the spiritual they're looking for a connection with you know or to have a connection with other people they're looking to have some sort of connection to something otherworldly and and i i dare say euphoric you know and to them this is basically the epitome of that because if you guys look around the you know let's say europe the western world spirituality has you know the problem is that this is a longer discussion but let's say the the institution of organized organized religion in particular christianity has turned uh so to speak connection to hashem or connection to god into a form into some sort of road formality right so for these people if if let's say the church right i'm just using one example loses all credibility they don't know they don't have the tools to connect to hashem otherwise maybe they do on a very superficial level i can't presume but let's just say if they don't they're going to seek out other things whether it's like music festivals sports sporting events you know these kind of things and so to them this is basically a religious experience my friends the day before if you see the scenes from argentina from buenos aires their team just won the Copa, it's called copa america it's a championship of south america this was the first time leo messi won anything significant you guys think he's like the best player in the world he made a final in the world cup and he won he won the uh copa finally won the copa america it was, like, it was the first time in like 20 something years that argentina won this uh tournament and um and it was the same thing you guys could see the scenes on the streets of buenos aires it's like people are just having some sort of religious experience it's a euphoria it's a it's a, i remember being a kid i was 13 years old and the rangers new york rangers won the stanley cup you should have seen the parade in new york and the feeling i actually remember this feeling this as well the feeling that people had in the summer of 1994 the euphoria that the city had i mean this was a collective religious experience for people so i can only conclude that i guess knowing what that could have been or assuming these people are presuming or assuming what that could feel like and 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 having lost that because that's what they were seeking they were just seeking connection and 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 vic you know what they call uh euphoria by by way of you know this ultimate victory right they have to supremacy victory whatever you want to whatever word you want to use they 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 lost that they lost out on that they know and they and they know what they lost out on you know whatever the italian people on the streets of rome got that night oops the the english people um missed out on you know it's fomo it's fear, fear missing out but it's more than that you know and so i finally understood now you take it to way higher levels with the jewish people right or at least people who are let's say tapped into the this is on this time of the year and 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 it's basically the same idea where we we didn't live in that time we never had this we never saw it again notwithstanding any conversations about you know uh people say oh we were in harsinai and we were there and we're in reincarn reincarnation of this and we were in rome and we're you know in uh judea two thousand years ago notwithstanding any conversations about you know these deep things we weren't there we didn't we don't know what we don't we don't have but it's almost as if we can only imagine what that would be like which is thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of times greater feeling than winning any trophy in any soccer tournament or any anything of the sort or a team winning anything and so it's that lack and it's the understanding that that something could be not only could be but it could be a, such a connection you know the shekhinah hashem 
could be with us again, you know? We can understand ostensibly what, what, what it is like to have Hashem, the clarity of Hashem in the world. We don't have that. Look around the world, you know, we, we don't know what's flying. We don't know what's going on with this disease that we have, with, with, you know, these cures supposedly, that things that are supposed to be helping us, maybe they're hurting us, maybe they're helping us, we don't know. How much are they helping us? How much are they hurting us? Whether to take more, which one to, to take, you know, when to open a country, when to close a country, when to start travel, when to not, you know, we don't know what's going on. We have no clarity. We don't have a sham here to tell us, to guide us. We don't, we don't have any force that's, that's here that is giving us the ultimate MS of the truth of, to tell us. You know, maybe this person's a charlatan. Maybe this government is doing like this. Maybe this government, maybe these people mean well and they're mistaken. Maybe these people are sinister. Maybe they're not. We don't. We, we just don't know. We can only maybe try to use our seicho, our, our, our intellect to, you know, kind of research and take from here and take from there and watch from here. We just don't know. And we're not going to ultimately completely know until the Sheena comes back. And you know, my friends... It's interesting, one of the, the, the main song, one of the slogans that uh, the English fans have been singing for a while uh, is called football's, football's Coming Home. You know, every time they make the semifinal or the final, they start singing the song, Football's Coming Home, Football's Coming Home. Why is it coming home? Because, um, fo you know, soccer is where, you know, uh, England was where soccer was invented. So every whenever they... You know, come close to winning a championship is as if as if soccer's coming home. Everybody thinks soccer's home is in Brazil, or Germany, or Argentina. You know, or or Netherlands. No, home is England. England England were the ones that brought soccer to Argentina, by the way, and to Brazil, to South America. Um. So, interestingly enough. If we have the Beit HaMikdash, if the Jewish people have the Beit HaMikdash, you know, Hashem will come home. Right now, Hashem is... Listen, you could say Hashem is... is existence, right? That's a different discussion. Again, esoteric idea. Notwithstanding that, but really, for us, not having the Beit HaMikdash means not having Hashem home. We're home, some of us, not all of us. And, you know, it's interesting, you know, it, it really made me finally kind of understand, maybe a little bit, how human beings can mourn or be in a state of like, kind of the level of mourning for something they never had and lost. Or for something that they, they haven't had in, you know, in this particular case, 55 years or however many years. You know, in the case of the Jewish people, 2,000 years. Some people don't, you know, most of, most of our nation, unfortunately, doesn't even know that it should be mourning. Doesn't even understand what the point is. Doesn't even, thinks it's a, you know, thinks that the Kotel and maybe by extension the Ter Temple Mount are, I don't know, tourist attractions. You know, ain't what I call ancient uh, uh, Times Square. You know, a lot of Israelis think that. A lot of Israelis come to Jerusalem to them. The Kotel is like Times Square. Oh, whoop de doo with the Kotel, you know? It's like me as a New Yorker, you know, I go to, I go to Times Square, I see all the lights. Oh, whoop de doo And then you see the people of tourists, like, they think it's something special. Like, wow, you know, they're having a, they're having like a religious experience. And you're wondering, oh, whoop de doo it's just a bunch of lights, like, that, you know, are annoying me and causing traffic. <laughs> but, um, you know, so that's most of our nation. Most of our nation thinks that or is under the impression, okay, yeah, we have this Western Wall thing, never been there. Yeah, what's behind it? Oh, you know, Muslims, you know, that's the that's a trajectory of history. Okay, so we had it before, so now the Muslims have it. Okay, so they built a mosque there. We're not going to remove them from there. Okay, it's not our place anymore, it's theirs now. And then the next nation will come and over, you know. This is how these things go. They just accepted it, you know. I remember somebody made a video on Vimeo. All the peoples that were in this land... This land is my land. This, you know, they see you like the you guys should watch it. On it's a cartoon on Vimeo. It's actually a very cool cartoon. It shows you the history of all the people that were here. But it's it's funny. The one constant in different incarnations and forms of the Jewish people. You see, like the Jews, as we were, 
as like the warriors and then and then we came back and then and then later we came back and shows like the uh jews who are like the hasidic you know but with like guns and it's a little bit like kind of generalization cultural kind of misnomer you guys say we're quick you know guys i'll just say we're not allowed to have music during these nine days because a lot of, i hear a lot of music everywhere not from jews not from arabs arabs also but from jews I don't understand. But anyway, just goes to show, even people in Israel, people don't have, they don't have that sensitivity, you know? They don't have that, it's unfortunate, you know? Yeah, there's blasting music in our neighborhood. It's amazing. It's like, what time is it now? It's almost midnight and they're just blasting music. They're, bl they're blasting it through the whole neighborhood. It's midnight, my friends. I guess people have work tomorrow. I don't know. And they're just, uh, like, I don't know, music on full blast. Baruch Hashem. So, it's amazing, you know, when you watch just, I guess, I guess, um, certain things with how people in, like, you know, the nations of the world react to certain things and the things that they value. And you could say, oh, you know, you can poo-poo it and say, oh, it's a bunch of nonsense and whatever, you know, it's like big deal, you know. People are, you know, prioritize the wrong things, but then you start, then you realize like, you, you, can, you can pretty much figure out, you know, th certain things about your own, I guess your own culture or your own, um, you know, what it is to mourn and again most of our nation is not tapped in on, on that level most of our nation is is again they don't even realize that they should be mourning anything it's like it's almost like um again i i always say that it's a blind man and walking in a dark room looking for a black cat that isn't there they don't know that there's anything to connect to i think uh there's a there's a rabbi in Sfat I once heard he said it's a, we're the generation of the double darkness it's so dark that we don't even know it's dark you know we don't even realize that it's dark we don't even realize that we are in the dark we're a blind man in a dark room it's always a dark for him doesn't matter where he is right he doesn't realize he's in the dark but with that said my friends you know much like in the darkness, you know, if you guys ever had a situation where you've gone to like, uh, um, you know, I remember going to like the science museum and they have like, you know, these pitch dark rooms you can go in and when you come out, you're like, you know, you come out into the light or into the regular, you know, regular room with like light, you feel like you're blind because you're being blinded. You know, it's like that song, blinded by the light. You know, it's like you're, you're blind because the light is so bright compared to where you just were it's the same thing here guys that's really the 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 hope i guess the saving grace that it is so dark and we're like a blind man in a dark room and it's a double darkness we don't know if there's anything to connect to but bef prior this is the situation just before the greatest light we're going to bound to see the greatest light it's so great that we're going to be blinded. I think that's why Hashem may be doing this gradually because we can't, we're not ready for the light. Just like we're not ready for, to hear the truth about certain things. Again, I won't mention <laughs> which things, but you know what I'm talking about, right? We're not ready to hear the truth. We're, we can hear it in piecemeal. We can hear it in, you know, here, a little bit here, a little bit there. We're not ready to hear in our face. Some people are because they're already tapped in on that level. Most people are not. So, yeah, my friends, Bezat Hashem, we're going to come out of the darkness. As I mentioned before, um, we're about to get a dose of emet, a dose of truth. Um, according to some, it's going to be six times, six times more, now that the Shemitah year is coming up, than the crazy amounts of sheker, of lies that we got for the last six years of the Shemitah cycle. And B'zad Hashem, you know, right now we're in the middle of July, B'zad Hashem, in the beginning of September, less than two months, 
I'm, I'm going to be saying it in every video, guys, from here on in. Bezrat Hashem. But uh, it really made me understand watching the, the soccer game and, and, and also seeing the whole thing in Argentina celebration, understand what it is to mourn for something you essentially never had and never saw. All right, guys. It's been real. I'll talk to you very soon.